Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Jay from Coding with Jaybird, where I upload weekly tutorials to help build your confidence in coding. Today we're going to learn about formatting text using CSS. Let's get started, shall we? Here I have a formatting text project that I've created. It has a simple index.html file and I'm linking it to a styles.css in a CSS folder. All right, so in my index, all I have is some H1 and H2 tags along with some paragraph tags. So let's go live and see what this looks like. So I'm gonna go through each one of these paragraph tags, targeting their specific IDs, which range from para one all the way down to para 21. All right, so those are just IDs that I came up with. It, you could call it P1, paragraph one, it really doesn't matter. I just wanna use this as a way of demonstrating the different methods that we can use to format text. All right, so let's go into our CSS. And the first one I wanna talk about is font family. So I'm gonna start by targeting that ID of para one. And then what I wanna do is I wanna target the font family property and here we can put in different fonts. So I could write something like sans serif. And when I save it, you'll see this has changed to sans serif. Or before this, I could even write um, a particular font, like let's say Arial Black. And then we have a comma separated list. And when I save it, you can see that the browser is actually able to make this look like Arial Black. Now, if for some reason the browser could not find this font, it would default to what's second in the list or third in the list and so on. Now, the reason I have this in single quotation is because it's two words. So if it was just one word, we would just be writing it without the quotation. So let's practice that for our second para. Okay, and here I'm going to say font family and let's try Georgia, comma, serif. So again, if it doesn't find Georgia, it'll change it to serif. So you can see it's changed it a little bit. This one looks a little different than our third one. So Georgia is a serif font. And the next one's a bit of a fun font. So let's say para three. And again, I'll target the font family and we can write fantasy. And here's what that looks like in the browser. I quite like that font. And then lastly, let's try another one in our para four. And let's try font family cursive. And I really like that one as well. And there are use cases where you may want to use different font families in your web design. All right, something else that we can change is our font size. Okay, so let's target our fifth paragraph and we simply use the font size property and I can give it a value of something like 10 pixels and you'll see we've got this tiny little font over here and that's because our standard font is 16 pixels. So let's try another one, we'll do paragraph six and this time for our font size, let's try 1.2 rem. Now we haven't talked about rems yet, which are root m's, um, and I will get into that in a later video, but basically the breakdown of rems is one rem equals 16 pixels by default, unless we set it differently in our CSS. So this is going to be 1.2 times larger than our standard font, which is 16 pixels. All right, so that's that one over there, and you can see it's a bit larger than the one below it. Now we can also use percents, so let's try that with our seventh paragraph. So I'll say font size, and let's say 150%, and you can see it made it 150% larger than our standard font, which would look like this. Something else that we can change is the font weight. So let's practice that next. Okay, so we would use the font weight property and then we would type in something like, let's say bold. And you can see it took this text and it made it bold. Now there's bolder, there's lighter, there's a few things you can do with font weight. We can also use numbers to define our font weight. So let's try that on paragraph nine, where I'll take the same font weight property and I'll apply 900 to it. And you can see it looks practically the same, actually does look the same as our previous one, which was called bold. So there's different values. You can have 600, 700, 900, and so on. And usually this is more relevant when you're actually downloading a font or using Google fonts. 
Okay, next I want to talk about font style. All right, so let's see, what can we do with our next paragraph? Well, we can use this font style property, and here we can put something like, let's say, italic. And you can see it took our next paragraph over here and it made it look italic. So it's slanted it and it looks kind of nice. Now, you can also make things look italic using the M in the HTML itself, but I'll leave that for another day since today we're focusing on CSS styling. And you can see I can also put it back to normal. So let's try font style normal. And so I can override that and set it back to normal. So let's just comment normal out since I wanted to demonstrate italic. Next, let's talk about font color. Now this is something you'll be using quite a bit. So once again, let's target our next paragraph, which is number 11. And let's say we wanna change its color property to red. And you can see we've changed this paragraph to red. Now we can also use different colors, like let's say gray. And we can change our paragraph to looking like gray text. We can also use what's called hex values. Now I will be getting into this in a later video, but for now, let's just take it for face value. This is what's called a hex number, which represents a color. And you can see it represents the color orange, so that paragraph looks like orange text. Next, let's talk about text alignment. So I'm going to target the next paragraph, which is para 14. And for text alignment, we use the property value text align colon. And I can say, let's say center our text. And you can see we've centered our text to the page. Now I can also make it go to the right. So let's practice that next. Or you can make it go to the left, which is really what it is by default. And here you can see we've made this paragraph be pushed over to the right. All right, so let's talk a little bit about text decoration next. Now there are different types of text decoration. I'm gonna focus specifically on text decoration line. So let's say text decoration line. And here I can say something like line through. And you'll see it took a line and put it right through our text. And once again, I can try another text decoration line value. This time let's try underline. And here you can see it's underlined our paragraph. Another neat one, which I'll show you is where you set it to overline and underline. So that's pretty neat because it looks like you've got like a border almost, but it's only on the top and below the text. All right, so let's talk about text transform next. So we'll target paragraph nine and we'll use the text transform property and give it a value of let's say capitalize. And what it does is it capitalizes the first letter of every word. Something else you can do with this, which I'll demonstrate on our 20th paragraph is text transform uppercase. Now you can make things lowercase as well. And what it does is basically capitalize to the entire paragraph. Okay, and lastly, I wanna talk about text shadow. Now this one's pretty neat. I actually have a lot of fun with this one. So let's target our last paragraph. Text shadow is the name of the property. And here it takes three values. So I'm gonna say four pixels, four pixels, and then let's say choose the color violet. And you can see here, I'm just gonna blow this up on the web browser here. And you can see we've created the shadow effect in violet. So what it does is it transforms the text, kind of pushes it over four pixels and down four pixels. Now we can use negative numbers here as well if we like. So it just takes that same text duplicates it in whichever color we choose here and then moves it over based on the pixels that we've given here. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video on formatting text. I hope you've been enjoying this video series. If you have, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so you can stay up to date with the next video in my series. Until next week, keep on coding.